Hey yo, and what is up gang? Thank you for checking out Sledgehammer TV today and if you're a fan of the WWE and you wanted a much better response to AEW's Double or Nothing, then you can look no further than NXT TakeOver 25. What a fucking night of action we were treated to and we are going to talk about it right here and right now. My name is Nick Nightmare and you are watching the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show's NXT TakeOver 25 review. Let's do it. All right, wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining me. Five years ago, NXT began its takeover of the professional wrestling world. And five years and 25 takeovers later, they continue to prove exactly why they are the best brand in all of sports entertainment. Yeah, that's right. I said the best brand and I'm including everybody. As impressed as you might have been with AEW, as great of a show as Double or Nothing might have been, I think last night's NXT TakeOver 25 might be the best wrestling show we are going to get the entire year. Five matchups, all very well built over the course of the last few weeks. Everything with a tremendous amount of dramatic tension. Everything about each one of these matches had you emotionally invested going into it. And by the end of it, the talent that was on display, the physical athleticism that was put on display tonight for us in order to tell these stories and bring them to some sort of its next step or in some cases a conclusion was absolutely beautiful. And that's the only reason why I give it the edge over Double or Nothing. Double or Nothing was a great show, but you cannot tell me Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega was better than Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship. That would be a bold face lie. <laughs> it's, you think Chris Jericho was firing on all cylinders out there? This show tonight was as close as you could possibly get to a perfect show. There are some things that were wrong with this show I did not care for their booking of Io Shirai and the way they just kind of made her look like a non-entity against Shayna Baszler. And I understand Baszler's this beast of a woman. She's been on top for so long. But I felt like she should have got a little bit more offense in the match and she should have definitely had more of a presence in the matchup. But by the end of, of everything, it didn't make any difference. And they did give her a nice little segment to conclude the woman's portion of this evening's <laughs> event, but I just didn't care for that. You guys also know how I feel about guys like The Bro. If you guys watch my NXT content on this channel, you know I was never big on Matt Riddle. I don't dig his millennial RVD vibe that he's got going on. But I would be a total asshole if I did not tell you guys that after watching this match tonight to kick off things on this show with Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle and I can't tell you how impressed I was by the end of that matchup there were more strikes thrown in that one particular match than you might see on an entire New Japan show and that's pretty fucking impressive and um, not that I'm taking anything back, I'm still not a big fan of the character that the guy plays, but his in-ring ability is definitely much better than I was giving him credit for, and I have to take my hat off to Matt Riddle for that performance tonight. I enjoyed Beth Phoenix on commentary. Beth Phoenix making her NXT TakeOver commentary debut. I think she fit in very well with the guy. She's very knowledgeable. She wasn't sitting there ooing and on, making crazy noises like Renee Young. She had very good facts that she was spouting out throughout the entirety of the, the evening, and I think Beth Phoenix is a welcome addition to the NXT broadcast team. And in a month that we had... Money in the bank and double or nothing to be sitting here to you on the first 
or second, in this case, day of June, saying that in the last four weeks, this was the best show that I have seen, and it may be the best show I've had all to see all year, is going to speak volumes. Because Double or Nothing was great. Money in the Bank, it had its issues, but it was one of the better editions of a Money in the Bank pay-per-view, with the exception of the whole Brock Lesnar bullshit. And this show, this five-match show, shot them all right in the chest. Put them six feet under, and there is no contest. There is no contest. NXT is the premier brand in all of professional wrestling or sports entertainment, whatever you want to call it. This show was fantastic. Triple H and the yellow and black brand know what they're doing. And the fact that this company exists within the WWE is why we get so frustrated with the content on the main product. Because the blueprint is right here. It's almost perfect. Almost perfect. This show started off, let's get into the matches. Roderick Strong versus Matt Riddle to kick things off like I told you guys. Never was a big fan of Riddle, but he definitely impressed me in this matchup. This was a fantastic match to kick off the show and set the pace for the entire evening, which I didn't think the rest of the matches was going to were going to be able to follow suit because this match was very, very intense. They told a tremendous story. Matt Riddle looked to be on the defensive for the very, very, uh, for the majority of this matchup. And Roderick Strong pulling out some impressive offense. These guys were kicking the shit out of one another. And eventually, Matt Riddle would make a comeback. Ends up hitting him with his finishing move. And uh, Matt Riddle's career gets its biggest win that it has ever had. In the WWE, at least. Matt Riddle making waves on this NXT TakeOver 25 show. A great, great match. Matt Riddle gets the victory, and the Undisputed Era do not for the first of their three matches on this evening. The second match, probably my second favorite match on the night for the vacated NXT Tag Team Championships. We had the Street Profits, the Forgotten Sons with Jackson Riker versus Lorcan and Birch. And the Undisputed Eras, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, better known to most of the world as Red Dragon. Holy shit, this match was something else. All of these guys, all eight men, put their bodies through hell in what I consider to be one of the most brutal ladder matches in the history of WWE ladder matches. There was furniture flying everywhere, there was bodies everywhere, Everybody's back and body just bruised and cut and just absolutely destroyed each other in there. People were being tossed off the ladders as if they had no regard for anybody's life whatsoever. Everybody was out there to kill each other for these tag team titles, which hung high above the ring. And I would have been fine actually with anybody winning this matchup. I think the Forgotten Sons could be a good team to have the championship and have some of these babyface teams try to chase them for the championship. They have Jackson Riker, which gives them that three-man advantage so that they could play that as a heel and as the champions, that would work very well. And you have guys like the Street Profits and Lorcan and Birch, and you can get a lot of great matches out of that. But my favorites to win this thing before it kicked off, I was actually rooting for Lorcan and Birch. I just think they're a fucking great team. I think they deserve a little bit of a moment in the sun. And I think a little tag team championship run wouldn't have hurt for them. And you could have always led that to dropping it to somebody else at the next show or somewhere along the lines on NXT. And it would have been okay. You know, give them a little thank you because they've been killing it in NXT over the last couple of years as a tag team. And I think... It would have been okay, and that was actually my pick. Some of you guys probably were rooting for the Red Dragon duo of O'Reilly and Fish, because that's a very popular tag team from the Indies. Everybody marked out when they came and formed the Undisputed Era. Bobby Fish got hurt. He was sitting on the sidelines for so long, I kind of thought the WWE was going to go back to the well and give it to the Undisputed Era once again, so that Bobby Fish can actually have a legitimate championship reign, which was the plan's 
from the onset, but that got ruined and Roderick Strong took his place in the faction there, which we all know. This match was unbelievable. I can't even talk about it. There was too much going on. My pen could not move as fast as the bodies were flying around. I couldn't keep enough accurate notes. All you need to know is at the end of this thing, Street Profits turned this thing into a solo cup party as they were the ones to come out victorious. Montez Ford springboards off of the top rope from the outside of the ring, landing on the ladder like a cat, very Shelton Benjamin-esque. The look on his face when he landed and stuck that landing like a gymnastic gold medalist and then looked in the eyes of the guy on the other side of the ladder and then pushed him off, pulled down those championships. It was a fantastic moment. The pop in the crowd was tremendous. It was bigger and better than anything we have seen from any other promotion in quite some time. I think the fans underneath the surface have been bubbling for the Street Profits to be at the championship level. They are definitely deserving. I have no problems with them getting the championships, and I think they're going to be great. This was a fantastic, fantastic ladder match, and you have to go see it if you missed it. Another thing you have to go back and see is the North American Championship match. The Velveteen Dream versus Prince Pretty Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze comes home to prove he still belongs here in NXT and set his sights on the Dream's North American Championship to do so. The Dream cut a promo and had a, a package against Tyler Breeze, which was just absolutely brutal. The Velveteen Dream targeting Tyler Breeze. Yeah, you used to be the man around here, but you forgot what the spotlight even felt like. When was the last time you had a standing ovation? When Triple H announced that you were going to the main roster, and since then, you've done nothing. Calling him out for letting his star fade. And now you want to come back to NXT. And the Dream wasn't going to allow him to take his North American Championship not on this night, and this, again, was a very good one-on-one -on -one contest. These guys are like mirror images of one another in character and a little bit in wrestling style. I thought they meshed very well together. It was very, very high impact, a lot of dramatic stuff going on, just, you know, with the cell phones and teasing each other and the Velveteen Dream talking shit throughout the match like he likes to do. Tyler Breeze brought his top, top game back with him. If you forgot what Tyler Breeze was all about, all you need to do is watch this matchup and you're going to go, oh shit, I remember that guy. He looked like a million bucks. He's got a new haircut. He's got it toned down so he's not so blonde anymore. The guy looks great. And you watch a match like this and you can't help but wonder why he was not used like this on the main roster. Why was Tyler Breeze not an intercontinental champion? Why was he relegated to the bullshit comedy era with Fandango and the Fashion Police when he's pulling off matches like this with the Velveteen Dream? Many times in this matchup, it looked as if Tyler Breeze was going to take that championship from him. He hit him with the um prettier. He hit him with that vicious supermodel kick on multiple occasions coming to very close two counts. But it just would not be because the Velveteen Dream was just a little bit too cerebral and a little too smart for this Tyler Breeze. He played the game of I'm going to introduce the belt into this matchup. The the Dream threatening to use the belt, gives it to the referee, throws it over to the referee. I'm sorry, I said Dream. I meant Tyler Breeze. Dream throws it into to Tyler Breeze. Tyler Breeze gives it to the referee because he didn't want to get disqualified. And then he turns around and ends up in the Dream Valley Driver, followed up by the Purple Rainmaker elbow. This match was over at this point, and Tyler Breeze can hold his head up high. He's still got it. He hasn't lost a step. Welcome home, back to NXT, and I hope you don't leave. And I hope this is not just a one-off and that they continue to push this because this was a great match. They showed a mutual sign of respect by taking a selfie together at the end of the match, but then the Velveteen Dream still had to just one-up him, kind of got in his face a little bit, and then made a little grand entrance, exit rather, from the ring. And that was the end of that match. And I'm already just hype from this pay-per-view up until this point. I really enjoyed every 
freaking minute of it. And then we get Io Shirai versus Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler may be the greatest female shoot wrestler I have ever seen in my life. The girl is terrifying. She's strong. And I don't agree, like we talked about at the beginning, with the way this match was booked. Only because I understand you're trying to protect Shayna Baszler as this badass character, and she's been probably the most dominant champion NXT has seen in their women's division. But this is Io Shirai. And I mean, at some point, somebody has to be able to stand up to her. So if Asuka, I'm sorry, if Kyrie couldn't do it, and Io is just going to take the part of Kyrie saying, like, there's no difference in this story than the one she already just had, with the Pirate Princess. Shayna Baszler is asserting her dominance over the challenger. She's pushing the challenger to her limits and then still coming out on top as Shayna Baszler gets Io Shirai to tap out in this match, a match full of tremendous spots by Io Shirai. She could have been made to look better, in my opinion. I know she did a beautiful moonsault to the outside and she did get physical towards the end of this thing. Shayna Baszler just grounding her from the get-go, attacking the arms, trying to take the strength away from her so she couldn't suplex her at points. And it was dramatic and it was very good and filled with tension, but I just felt like Io should have brought more of a fight. It was a little bit too one-sided, in my opinion. And even though at the end of this match, they would have the horsewoman come out, to try to gain the advantage, and then Candice LeRae would come out, start swinging a kendo stick, kendo Candice, holy shit, with more intensity than Johnny Gargano, I think, which would allow for Io Shirai to get a chair. She got a chair from underneath the ring, Candice LeRae got it for her, handed it to her, and she did a moonsault off the top rope with the chair across the body of the champion who was laid out thanks to a post-match attack by Io Shirai. And how does that make sense? The baby face has snapped and is attacking this vicious woman. Like, I, it just, it didn't come off 100% to me. It felt like, I, I don't know exactly what it is they're trying to do. Is Io Shirai going to be turned at some point? Like, why would she just snap out? I know that Baszler and the Horsewoman have been putting her through some shit. They've been talking shit. They've been bothering Candace. They've been bothering all the girls in the back. But, I don't know. I just, I'm not really sure exactly what to think about it. And I'm sure it's far from over and we are going to see Io Shirai versus Shayna Baszler as uh, she is still our NXT Women's Champion. And that will not be the last we see of that match. Johnny Gargano, Johnny Champion, Johnny NXT, Johnny Takeover, won the NXT Championship at the last takeover. He beat Adam Cole two out of three falls. Since then, Johnny Gargano has been a great champion. Adam Cole has stated from the get-go that he won that first fall in that two out of three match. And if it were a normal match, Adam Cole would be and should be the champion right now. And he continued to maintain that fact. He has made it a quest of his personally to wrestle that championship away from Johnny Gargano. And tonight, he would do just that in one of the most physical and very intense performances I have ever seen two men put themselves through in my entire life. Now, on the one side, I'm going to be completely honest. And as fun and as good as this match was, I am not a fan of the no-sell offense fucking segments or, or sequences, rather. How can you get fucking need in the face and then just come back with a clothesline? That's that Ring of Honor New Japan shit that, that gets on my nerves. How do you guys hit, one guy hits with a knee, then the other guy gets hit with a knee, and then you get elbow to the face, and you get this, and you that, and then nobody seemingly getting hurt. <laughs> it's like, oh, they sell it for a minute. Oh, I got rocked in the face. Wait a minute, I'm going to rock you back. As if all of a sudden the cobwebs are gone. These guys are taking reverse runners. Adam Cole took a reverse runner from Johnny Gargano, ended up on his feet, bounced off the rope, and then hit him with a lariat. Like, I'm I'm not a fan of that type of shit. <laughs> I don't enjoy that. I don't get, like, the crowd did 
you know, and I'm sure some of you guys got all like, oh, wow, look at this, what a great, what a great acrobatic sequence. But to me, wrestling like that is not good for the business. Because you're, it's bad enough, we all already know it's fake, right? We're, we're not fucking stupid, we're not six years old. But just because you can do these cool sequences sometimes doesn't mean that you should. Where this match strengths lie was in the intensity and the physicality between these two men and the story of Johnny Gargano's injured knee. That is the beauty that came out of this matchup. The storytelling was fantastic. All of those one after the other, no-sell offensive sequences just don't do it for me. But when Johnny Gargano wants to go flying through the rope with a tope suicida and get kicked in the face... (laughs) <laughs> and leading to a sick flipping pile driver. What the hell does he call that? The Panama Sunrise on the arena floor. It, it's just that type of a match, man. Very intense, very, very physical. A, a benchmark match for both of these men in their careers. The knee is what made all the difference. As towards the end of this very long, very, very crazy matchup, Johnny Gargano would kick out of everything that Adam Cole was dishing at him until he would find himself wrapped up in Johnny Gargano's Gargano Escape submission. He would attack the exposed knee, which gave him the advantage He was able to hit a Panama Sunrise, followed by a last shot, which he had hit like four times already in the matchup. And Adam Cole, after an epic battle, is the new NXT champ, baby! And I don't really have too much negative to say about it. This was a fucking great show. Whether or not I'm a fan of that whole no-sell bullshit, this was an achievement for both of these men. They definitely left it all out there for the NXT Championship. You cannot watch that matchup and tell me it might not be the match of the whole entire year. Ups and downs, drama, multiple styles of wrestling instituted into this one match. We had some ground game. We had a lot of fisticuffs, just regular bunkhouse brawling. And then we had the New Japan-esque style to it at times. Johnny Gargano coming out in Captain Marvel gear, which was a little bit of a strange choice if you ask me. Not that just because she's a girl he can't wear her outfit. I just figured with all the fucking superheroes that are out right now, why would you choose Captain Marvel? She's definitely the worst of them. I'm just, I was never a fan of Captain Marvel, not in the comic books, not in the series, and I hate the way they made her out to be something special for the MCU, and she ended up just being nothing. So, I, I, I wouldn't want to go out there wearing those colors. I would have rather been Spider-Man, or Iron Man, or the Hulk, but that's just me. Adam Cole coming out with the freestyle rap guy doing this whole little freestyle thing to the Undisputed theme song, and I thought that was fucking fantastic. And it was also my first little hint to me that maybe tonight Adam Cole is the one going to be walking out with the NXT Championship. And I'm really okay with it. I think Johnny Gargano having his run with the title was great, and I think it's something that needed to be short. Because there's only so long you're going to be able to sell Johnny Gargano as this ultimate champion or this fighting champion because that kind of shtick gets very old and boring very quickly a heel champion more often than not is most likely the better way to go especially down in nxt you're going to get a whole bunch more good matches coming out maybe tyler breeze versus adam cole maybe we will see the velveteen dream and adam cole going at it again in the near future we got a lot of great shit to look forward to thanks to nxt and the new champ baby Adam Cole. Thank you guys so much for checking out this channel today and being with us today for our NXT TakeOver review. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed anything we had to say here today. You know, my NXT reviews, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I hate reviewing NXT. And it's not because I'm a negative asshole who likes to talk shit about things. It's just because it is infinitely easier to criticize something when there's a lot to criticize than it is to watch a show that, that just goes on all cylinders for the entirety of the show and really doesn't leave me anything to sell you guys or tell you guys to be funny or entertaining because this show was fucking great. 
show was great. So I can't sit here making jokes when these guys went out there nearly killing each other and did a fucking fantastic job putting on probably the best pay-per-view special of the whole entire year. And it makes it hard to review NXT, and that's why I don't tend to do it unless we have, like, a takeover. But NXT is, is just the best, man. And as of right now, it is definitely on, on my number one. One is them. Two, I guess we could put AEW. It still needs to be proven. I'm not going to put them at number two. Two is still WWE. Three is AEW until we start seeing what they're going to throw at us on TNT. I'm not a fucking dumbass mark like that. I'm not just going to sit there and go, oh, AEW is the fucking best, man. It's going to save the fucking world, man. It's going to do everything, man. We see one fucking show. We see one show. Calm down. And that show was was very good at best. Right? Let's be honest. Hammer's coming down. It's what we do. Okay, fucking company's got one show. And everybody's fucking freaking out. Oh, they're going to save the fucking world. Let's see what they got before we start claiming all these fucking things. Right now, you know what you have? You have NXT. The best professional wrestling brand on the planet. And we have Triple H to thank. And one day, one day, man, I hope I fucking live to see it. He's going to bring this to the main roster, and no matter what AEW is doing, at that minute, the minute the clock strikes when Triple H takes control, there is no other wrestling company on the fucking face of the earth that will be able to beat the WWE. But until then, this is what we got. My name is Nick Nightmare. This is the team, Thor the Sledgehammer, the official Sledgehammer of the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, his tag team partner, the world heavyweight champion of all the microphones in all the world, Mr. Blue the Snowball. The most important member of the team, as always, is each and every one of you. So if you are not already a member of one of the coolest clubs on YouTube, the Sledgehammer Club, my family, my brothers and sisters of the Sledgehammer TV family, then you got to hit that subscribe button. Right now, become one of the 1,500 plus that know that when you want your wrestling and entertainment news bullshit free and full of fun and truth and justice, that Sledgehammer TV is the place to be. Don't forget to share this video with each and every one of your wrestling buddies all over the wrestling world, especially if they were very entertained by NXT and want some place to come and talk about it. I invite you all to talk about it in the comments section down below. What was your favorite matchup? On the night, who do you think should have won? Who do you think should have lost? And what do you think about the future of NXT? So let me know all of those things down in the comments below. Don't forget to check out everything else on this channel. We got 2K simulations leading up into Super Showdown. We have Goldberg versus The Undertaker up right now. And we are working on another one coming at you guys sometime this week. The reviews of Monday Night Raw, SmackDown, Double or Nothing, Money in the Bank, the... Pro Wrestling Crate Unboxing. Anything you want to watch. Game of Thrones. The worst final season in history was hammered by this guy right here on Sledgehammer TV. If you missed any of that, some of it will be linked in the annotations below. If it's not, then go to the, the main Sledgehammer TV YouTube page and choose up to your heart's content. WWE lists all kinds of great shit for everybody who is a bona fide sledgehead. That, <laughs> my friends, is going to do it, and we are out of here. And we will see you Monday night for Monday Night Raw, right here on your new favorite wrestling show, the Sledgehammer Wrestling Show, only on Sledgehammer TV, right here on YouTube.com. Uh -huh.